Hello everyone, so we are doing something a little bit different today. My Starlink has arrived. It's time to do an unboxing and then also we're going to test it out. We're going to get it set up and generally do a review. I'll also kind of fast forward a couple of weeks and give you kind of an opinion after I've been using it for a while as well. So hang around, let's check this thing out and let's see. Is Starlink worth it? Does it give you good speeds? Is it consistent? Is it stable? Is it worth the money? So first things first, the box is absolutely massive. Definitely bigger than like a normal router because there's a satellite dish in here. So let's get this opened and check it out. It's not even unsealed yet. So I'm gonna grab a knife and let's get into it. Okay, so box is open. Um, you have to forgive me, I am holding the camera and trying to do this at the same time, but presented with just a big old piece of plastic. Let's take this off. And underneath we have the dish itself. Uh, that's interesting. It uh, looks like there's some marks on the actual thing. We'll keep an eye on this. Is this not a new unit? It certainly should be. Uh, let's, uh, yeah, let's dive in and have a look. Okay, so this is the, the base mount, which is pretty heavy, actually. It's made of metal. Definitely going to be quite stable. Uh, we will use this for testing, but then I'm going to mount it to the back of my fence, so I won't need this long term, but we'll get that out of the way. Okay, and then we have another piece of plastic, and then it looks like the dish itself. Let's get it up. Yep. So this is the actual dish. Um, it, it doesn't look damaged anywhere else, so that's a good sign. Hopefully it was just that bit of damage on the back there. So not too bad at all. Under the dish we have a very simple instruction manual, which basically says, set up the dish plug it into the router, plug the router into the wall, connect to the Wi-Fi. That's kind of all it is, which is fair enough. That's all that's on there. And then underneath that, we have the actual Wi-Fi router itself, which does look quite nice, I must admit. That's a nice kind of design. You've got the big plug on the bottom and another plug as well. I'm guessing one of those will be the power supply. One of those is the plug to the satellite. And then under that, you've just got the cables. You've got the power cable for the router itself, and then the long cable for the Starlink, which I'm not actually sure if it's gonna be long enough. Again, it does look like there's a bit of damage to it. This must be a used, I think this is a very lightly used satellite, which is a shame, but such is life. Let's get it downstairs. So this is everything set up with the included stand. I will say that I'm actually renting this at a monthly cost as opposed to buying the hardware, which is probably why I have a used unit. So wasn't expecting that, but, but it's fine. I will say as well that this really isn't enough mounting hardware to be included in the box, especially if you did actually buy this for over £400. They should really have included better mounting equipment out of the box. But one thing I have to give them credit for is the app itself. So easy to use. Tells you every step of the way how to get everything set up. Takes you through to connect to the Wi-Fi network that like it automatically starts up with and then goes through the process of setting up a new Wi-Fi network name and then telling you also to set up a secure password. Once you're into the app, it gives you all the information and statistics you could need about the satellite, about what's going on, what's connected, etc. Really is a great setup the next day okay so it's the next day and we now have this the receiver kind of all connected up on this post just using a metal bracket which i got from b and q for about eight pound and it is nicely stable it's not going anywhere my only problem with it is because this pole is really quite short it doesn't actually reach above the fence so kind of the it's a bit restricted if it wants to move that way much does seem to be kind of fine at the moment. This is just where it ended up wanting to be. So we'll see, but otherwise I might have to get a pole extension. Again, I'll just get some metal pole and extend it. I'm not paying Starlink's prices because it was about £75 to get a Starlink mount when this cost £8 and does the job just as well. One week later. Hello, everyone. So it's now been a week since I started using Starlink exclusively for my internet. Um, so I thought now's the perfect time to get into it and give you some kind of initial impressions alongside my unboxing and everything else in this video. So I'm sure the question you've all been kind of wanting to know 
what speeds am I getting? Well, I did some very kind of um, unscientific speed tests randomly throughout the week to try and get some idea of how much uh, download and upload speeds we'd be getting. I tried to also kind of do it in different weather conditions to get an idea of whether the weather was going to have a big impact. And I will say that I think the weather has some impact. We kind of find that on a completely clear day, you're going to get a better speed. My best speed was on a clear day. But I also don't think that bad weather is impacting it too much. Once you have a cloud coverage, it doesn't seem to matter how thick that cloud is or if it's raining. Uh, I definitely did a speed test or two during downpours in traditional British summer. So yeah, it's kind of interesting to see that it's not a huge impact, but it definitely does make a difference if you've got a clear sky compared to a not clear sky. So, speeds. Well, I think basically um, we got quite a range of speed. Our lowest recorded speed using Starlink was 94 uh, megabits per second, which I don't think is actually too bad at all. Um, our highest speed was 251 megabits per second, which is impressive, I think. So, and that was on a clear day. So it's real range, but on average, we are getting about 152. Definitely seems to fluctuate more in that middle area. So I'm quite happy with that speed. Um, that works for me. In terms of upload speeds, uh, the lowest we got was uh, seven megabits per second. The highest we got was 28. So again, a bit of a range, but we st again, averaging around 20 most of the time not too bad. If we compare that to the speed that I was getting through my usual uh, internet provider Sky, um, where basically it's just copper, we don't even have fiber to the cabinet, uh, you'll see that kind of my upload speeds were about 10 megabit per second. Um, and my download speeds are around kind of 25, 28. So it's a big increase on the download speed, which was kind of the main issue we were facing. Definitely for my use case, I work from home. Uh, my wife also works from home. So if we're both on a video call or something, the old internet just wouldn't work. We got to a point where we had to kind of schedule meetings to make sure that only one of us needed the bandwidth, which is ridiculous really in the modern age. What's also kind of uh, interesting though is the latency. That's something that a lot of people when I was doing research was complaining about. And it's a fair complaint the lowest latency we got on download was 85 milliseconds and the highest was 335. Now it's averaging at around 180 to 200, so that's not so bad, but I will say you're definitely not gonna be playing like fast paced first person shooters using uh, Starlink, or at least you're not gonna have a good time if you do. Uh, my gaming kind of is Minecraft and maybe a little bit of Fortnite. I'm not good at Fortnite, so I, that kind of latency makes no difference. I'm still going to die just as often as I do anyway. So for me, again, personally, perfect for my use case, but really big consideration to have. If you are massively into fast-paced gaming, you're going to notice a difference. However, it's low enough latency for things like video calls and um, you know, audio calls, and also then... Streaming works so much better now as well. We have much wider bandwidth for downloading 4K streams and that sort of thing. So that works really well as well. So like I say, for our use cases, it's perfect. Of course, I say that because really I had no other choice. Uh, it was either that or like I say, my Sky internet, which was really terrible. Uh, I When I kind of started making this video, I actually found out that literally one street away from me has virgin uh, fiber optic, which is incredibly frustrating. So they have one gigabit per second and um, I can barely get 20 over the cable. So yeah, that's frustrating and it doesn't look like that's gonna change anytime soon. So I say Starlink is great for me. It's actually kind of my only choice, um, but it, it does work well. It does work well for what it is. And that kind of brings me on to the cost of it really. Um, this is a big thing, obviously, to factor in, and for a lot of people, is a serious consideration. Uh, my old internet was costing me £35 a month. Now, frankly, I found that to be very expensive for what we were getting, but that was the cost. Starlink, 
Uh, as I mentioned, we're actually renting the satellite. So the satellite is a £15 a month rental fee. And then the service is £75 a month. So in total, it's £90 a month to have this internet connection. And for a lot of people, that's going to be too expensive. And I completely agree. It's a very expensive way to get internet. Uh, unfortunately, because like I say, both myself and my wife work from home, uh, we need a faster internet connection and it is worth the cost to us because the time I've already saved by not having to kind of try and juggle around my calendar to get the right time to do conference calls and, and trying to figure out when I can upload things onto my YouTube channel and doing all these sorts of things, uh, the amount of time I've already saved is, is paid for itself really. But for a lot of use cases, it's going to be too expensive. So with that in mind, I'm going to be keeping Starlink. I think this is the right situation for me, uh, given what's available. Would I change it out if Virgin Media came to my street? Definitely. And that's kind of a plus of Starlink. There's no long-term contract. It's a 30-day contract. So if at some point I do get fibre to the cabinet, fibre to the home, something else offered to me, I can just change to it. And Starlink, I can send the satellite receiver back and job done. And I have to kind of um, highlight that because I think it's a great thing that they're doing, uh, which a lot of internet service providers don't do. Most places lock you into a very long contract. So yes, month on month, it's very expensive, but um, you do have more flexibility. So if there's times where maybe you're away for a long period of time, or maybe there's only certain times, maybe when the kids are home uh, from school, you know, during the summer holidays, maybe that's when you need a better internet connection and you can kind of do it like that. So, you know, there's some definitely some pluses and some negatives to everything, but I will be keeping it. And uh, so far it's going really well. So if you would like to see kind of a future review, maybe uh, a month, two months, three months, six months down the line, please make sure to comment down below. Uh, and also, I'd love to hear your thoughts on Starlink as well. So please do comment down below uh, if you're a user of Starlink, if it's something you've considered, and just any questions that you might have as well, I'm happy to answer them. And hopefully you've enjoyed this type of video. This is my first kind of tech review on the channel as well. So uh, something a bit different, but hopefully something I can do more of something that will be interesting to you as well. So if you have enjoyed this video, please do hit that like button. It's going to help a lot. And obviously, if you want to see more content in the future, or you're also interested in my travel vlogs and my kind of uh, aviation videos, please also do subscribe. Uh, we are kind of pushing our way up to 300 subscribers, and I'd love for you to join. So thank you very much. Have a good day, and I'll see you next time.